So today's project involves modifying my DRO setup on my lathe. This is my touch DRO board from Yuri's Toys. Uh, it allows you to hook up oh, four scale, up to four scales and transmits them the, the readouts to a tablet, an app on your tablet. It's got a lot of really great functionality and it doesn't cost a lot of money. Um, so currently I have um, X and Z for the lathe axes. Y is for my tailstock DRO, which reads off of the quill. The W input can do t one of two things. It has two functions. Um, it can either have a rotary axis, uh, reading out an angle, which I actually will be using on my mill eventually, uh, my rotary table, uh, or it can add, you can hook a scale to it, and it can add that scale to any of the other three. It, I think the, the main purpose of something like that is um, like a bridge port where you have uh, the knee and the quill, it'll add them, it'll add the two together so that you have a constant readout of where your Z height is, regardless of if you've moved the knee or the, you know, the knee up or the quill down or vice versa. It'll, it'll still give you an accurate readout as to where your tool is or where you are in relation to the work. So what I'm going to do is on the lathe, I'm going to add a scale that follows the actual tailstock back and forth in addition to the quill, and I'm going to hook that up to the W axis so that I have a constant readout of where my tailstock quill is. If I, you know, if I'm drilling a really deep hole or something of that nature, where I'm actually pulling the tailstock back and putting it back in, I don't want to lose my position if I'm trying to drill to a precision depth. So I'll take you on over to the lathe and give you a better idea of what I'm talking about. All right, so now we're at the back of the lathe. Uh, you can see the scale for the z-axis on the DRO. Uh, this is the reed head here for the carriage. And what I'm going to do, now these scales are just simple magnetic strips, and the reed head is where all the magic happens. My intention, my hope, is that I'll be able to put an additional reed head on the scale and attach it here somehow to the tailstock and have it follow the tailstock along. I don't see why that would be a problem. Uh, like I said, the reed head is where, all, where it matters. The only thing that is important is making sure that I get the orientation of the reed head correct on the scale itself. This is the scale, the additional readout I'll be using. I just really need the reed head. But if you look, you can see the little magnetic uh, bits. This is what the reed head itself, it reads rising and falling edges so that it knows where it is. Now it matters, you, I don't know if you can see that they're wider at one side than the other. So that's why the orientation matters, otherwise the readout won't read correctly. So what I'm going to do is just pop this scale off real quick, see which way the uh, strips are facing, and just to make sure that I get the new reed head in the proper orientation.
right. Let's go ahead and wipe this fucker down. actually see where it's been wearing through the coating the copper underneath <laughs> well anyway so it appears that the orientation is the same cable comes out the bottom which is nice and handy so what I need to do now pop this reed head off of this scale and hopefully it'll slide nice and easy right onto this one. Hopefully it's that easy. Let's uh, pull you back and give you an idea of uh, what's going on next. So these readouts come with these displays, which eh, they work pretty decent, but they don't have a whole lot of functionality. I mean, but what they do have is a micro USB connection which is what will connect to the touch DRO board as such now I'm just going to run this around the bench temporarily uh, normally all my cables run pretty neatly over and then under the lathe um, but just for testing purposes so what I need to do now, once I get this attached back to the lathe, hook the touch DRO board back up, and the because the boards are able to work with all different kinds of scales, um, you have to enter in the counts per inch. Because all this does is just it counts every edge that it comes across and that's how it knows how far it's traveled so you have to tell the app how many counts there are in, in every inch of travel I'm hoping that because I'm using the same scale with the two reed heads I should be able to enter the counts per inch for this reed head into the W axis reed head and have it be the same um, I guess we'll see but for now, I'm just going to put this back on the lathe and hook everything up and see if she works. All right. So now I've got you on the front side of the lathe. You can see the reed head and the scale for the tailstock quill. So what we need to do now is add the new reed heads readout to this one. So let me bring up the, uh, the readout screen here. So now, see my they have the label there X, Y, and Z top to bottom, but I've renamed Y to tail. So we go in to our settings, scroll down to the bottom, we enable the W axis. We want it to add to the Y readout. <clears throat> now, as far as the CPI is concerned, the axis CPI, I'm hoping since it's on the same scale as the Z read head that I'll be able to use the same counts per inch for the Z at the for the W as I've got on the Z so 2559.6 let's go ahead and add that into 
six. All right, that should be everything we need for now. Okay, we'll go ahead and zero. And move the quill. Okay, that works. And I'm gonna reach behind. I'm gonna move the new reed head towards the headstock. Helps if I get some room. All right, so the reading kept going and in the proper direction. Awesome. So now what we need to do is check the, check that it's measuring correctly, that it's reading correctly. So to do that, what I'm gonna do is move you and bring you right back. So now that we know the reed head works, it's on the axis, let's go ahead and test to see if our counts per inch is accurate. Now, normally I would do this with one, two, three block and dial indicator and a whole bunch of monkey motion, but considering I've already got a scale or a, a reed head on this scale, it's already calibrated, all I'm going to do is just bump this one up against and hold a little bit of pressure. They're already zeroed out. And I'll just move one inch, thereabouts. <laughs> and I'll call that good. Within a thou, if not dead nuts. Ending. Yeah, I'll call that good. Cool. That makes all of this a lot easier. So now, the last step is to build a bracket that connects base of the tailstock to the reed head. And yeah, that'll be it. All right, I'll bring you back when I've got something figured out. All right. So, a big consideration here, given that this is such a tiny lathe, is that I often remove the tailstock, just for more room. Um, so, this bracket to the DRO reed head needs to be pretty easily removable, but also solid when it is connected, and also out of the way when it isn't. So, to that end, thinking I'll probably just make a block that bolts on to the tailstock base here, and it ends up coplanar with the back side of the reed head. And it doesn't need to be perfect, so what I'm going to do is use my square. transfer a measurement, and that should be good. Just looks like a little shy of an inch. So I will use my digital calipers to get a more precise measurement. And also, I would need to know how wide tailstock base is. So I need a piece that's piece of aluminum. Uh, we'll go two and a half inches by one inch. And that is Uh, 
and we'll start out with a half inch thick. So two and a half by one by half. Let me go see if uh, you go raid my stockpile, and I'll come up with something, and I'll uh, bring you over to the mill.